Packersham Equestrian Centre in Leatherhead to find out the best feeding and pasture management techniques to use when you become the proud owner of a horse or pony. The amount of food a horse or pony needs will vary enormously depending on its size, breed, age and activity. While some professional horses are never turned out, ponies will probably spend a large amount of time grazing and it's important to keep an eye on the condition of their pasture. Well, I'm joined now by Ben Mays, President of the British Equine Veterinary Association. Ben, what would you say is the best advice you can give for effective pasture management? Getting the grazing right is, is very important and fundamental part of nutrition. About 1 to 1.5 acres per horse and pony is, is as recommended, but it's very dependent on how that horse or pony lives. Sometimes pastures just need reseeding and, and the seed choice is very important. A lot of pasture mixes, the grass is too rich and has broad leaves such as clover in it, which fix nitrogen, which is excellent for the growth and the richness of the, of the grass. But often too much for ponies and can lead to laminitis. Looking after that pasture, topping, harrowing, muck spreading and, and even fertilising are very important. Use of artificial fertilisers is fine, particularly before the growing season, but making sure you comply with manufacturer's recommendations such as don't put the, the, the stock out on the field again for at least three weeks is important. If you want to limit the amount of grazing your horse gets, not just by turning it in and out, you could use electric fencing that's perfectly movable and when the power's on, it's very effective to, to, to move and, and graze different parts of that, that field. Some ponies, for example, if you want to turn them out and they're really a bit too chubby, then use of grazing muzzles is very important as well. And that would, say, an hour's grazing reduce the real-time grazing down to about 10 minutes. Stabled horses need to have their diet supplemented and forage is essential as a horse is used to eating up to 18 hours a day. It also relieves the boredom of the stable. Of course, not all forage is equal. The nutrient composition of straw is very different from that of growing spring grass. How much should you be feeding and what should you be feeding? A very good question because every horse and pony is different. But the BHS Stage 3 Stable Management Guidelines would say about 2.5% of body weight um, per horse and pony. And of that, around 70% forage, hay or haylage, and around 30% hard feed. Uh, and that hard feed would depend on, on the work and the type of horse. Nutritional advice is, is available on, on, on every bag of food, and that's really important because getting it right for your horse and pony can be difficult. And how can owners know when or if they need to adjust the amount of feed they're giving them? It's very important to be able to try and predict what you're going to do and what your horse and pony's weight is and try and maintain it throughout the year according to what they're doing with work and what you're doing as well. Um, one way of doing that would be um, a weigh tape. Now they're readily available again from the feed manufacturers. So say you took the weigh tape measurement of the animal's weight and plot it on a weekly basis or write it down on a weekly basis, you can see the trend of where your horse or pony is going. Obviously water is a consideration as well. How much should horse and ponies be drinking? Around five to 10 gallons per 24 hour period. Clean, fresh water all the time is very important um, and should always be available. And, uh, and if you're doing it in a bucket, then make sure it can't be kicked over and perhaps put in a tyre or something like that. Internal parasites are a significant threat to the health of horses. They're small organisms living a portion of their life cycle in the horse's internal organs, body cavities and tissues. Although there are some gut parasites, such as nematodes, tapeworms are the main ones. A parasite control programme to control their numbers is an essential part of caring for your horse. How would you say is the best way to effectively control parasites? Um, well, pasture management is a good place to start and, and poo picking is very important. Removing the worm eggs and the larvae off the pasture, giving them to the vet or sending them off to a lab that you found on online or, or in the horsey press and using the results, say they're negative, don't need to worm, resample two, three months down the line. Or if you could get a positive, then use a chemical wormer at that point. Cross grazing, so using different species to graze that um, pasture for periods in between using horses because worms don't cross from one species to other, they're very species specific. Um, or resting that pasture, for example, for six months and then the, the environment would kill off the worm eggs. Um, so that pasture management is important. 
there are some plants that can cause horses real problems. Ragwort is particularly poisonous to horses as it can cause serious liver damage if eaten. Horses and ponies will generally avoid eating it, but if grass burns off or there is overcrowding in a field, a horse may forage in the hedgerow and eat what they normally would shun. So how can horse and pony owners recognise ragwort? What does it look like? Uh, ragwort's a biennial plant, so in the first year it's very low to the ground with a rosette-like flower. In the second year, the more familiar long-stemmed yellow flower. Controlling it is best by manual labour of pulling it up, but wearing gloves and protective clothing, and then clearing it away out of reach of the horses and ponies and burning it. Because dried ragwort is the real problem because it, it loses its bitter taste and the horses and ponies just eat it normally. And if it gets into the hay or forage, so if a, a, the hay is made off a field where ragwort is growing, then the, the horse and pony can eat it all winter season and the toxins build up and can quite cause quite severe hepatitis, often years after they've eaten it. So that's why ragwort is so notorious. Are there any other plants that owners should be looking out for, though? Absolutely. There's a really long list of poisonous plants. St John's wort, bracken, ivy, use quite a good one because even one mouthful tends to be very poisonous and even fatal. Um, acorns are quite a common one because there's a lot of oak trees near grazing pasture and, and some horses and ponies get a real appetite for them and they contain tannins which can then lead to uh, liver problems and gastrointestinal problems. So trying to fence off the acorns at that time of the year is quite important. When considering pasture feeding and management, always remember, don't overgraze your pasture. Feed your horse the right amount for its weight and work rate. Make sure you keep pastures free of poisonous plants. Equine parasites must be kept under control. Ensure your horse always has plenty of water. Regular pasture management will maintain your horse's grazing in good nutritional condition and it's also one of the most effective ways of controlling parasites in your horse. By being vigilant about weeds, you can stop poisonous plants such as ragwort from becoming a problem and effective feeding management will prevent your horse from becoming overweight and in turn reduce the risk of the life-threatening condition laminitis. Mm -hmm.